Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. So in this video today, we are going to cover the structure of your first CMC joint or the thumb, right? CMC joint at the thumb. So we will be starting today with our articulation that is a saddle shape articulation. We will look at the proximal and the distal articulation. Then we will look at the capsule and the ligaments and that will cover the first part of the video that is the structure. And then after this we will move on to the function that is the range of movement, the axis and what are the other features of your thumb or the first CMC joint. Okay, So let's start with the topic. First starting with the articulation, it is a saddle shape articulation that means it has a concave as well as convex, right? You can see over here the concave surface as well as convex surface for articulation on the proximal end and again that is reciprocated at the distal end. So I will be showing you the exact model and how the movement happens over here but for now just try to look at the picture over here and we'll see what I have mentioned over here. So there is proximal articulation right which has two parts there is a concave part and there is proximal articulation which has convex part. So one of it is in the sagittal plane, right, which has abduction and adduction. So if you have to look at it on an actual model, it will look something like this. So first we are looking at the concave surface of the trapezium, okay. So if you see over here, this is concave and it is in the sagittal plane. Now how do you know it's in the sagittal plane if you look at Joe? This is the sagittal plane, right? And this is his left hand because the thumb is outside, correct? So the concave surface will be in the sagittal plane and what movement will happen over here? Abduction, adduction. Now I know you might expect abduction and adduction to happen this way, but it happens over here like this because of the positioning of the trapezium. It's slightly medially rotated. I'll explain that in a bit, but for now you need to understand this is the sagittal plane and concave part is arranged or aligned in that plane correct over here next we have the convex part that is in the frontal plane and that leads to flexion and extension movement at the cmc joint and this is how it looks on the bone model so the convex articulating part will be in the frontal plane now again i have kept joe over here just for you to understand that this is the frontal plane correct and in the frontal plane as you can see over here it's convex again it won't be a proper convex surface but just to get an idea that would be convex and here flexion extension right flexion and extension will happen again you would expect this to be abduction adduction but it is flexion extension because of the orientation of the trapezium which i will explain in a bit but to understand this is the concave and convex surface both of which form the saddle articulating surface of the trapezium and exactly opposite will be reciprocated by your first metacarpal and finally we have the third articulation that is the proximal spherical surface which is not very clear but they say that circumduction which i will come to in a small bit basically it is combination of your flexion, abduction and adduction, right? The combination of this movement causes circumduction movement. This is the circumduction movement where you do a circular or a rotatory movement at the thumb and that is allowed through spherical surface which is not very clear. Some say there is just so much incongruence that it allows the movement and the ligaments kind of hold the bone in place but some say there is like an actual articulation which allows this circumduction to happen. So these are the proximal articulations that we have for the saddle shape and then distally if we see distally we have the base of the first metacarpal okay that is over here first metacarpal over here and the articulation will be exactly opposite to the articulation over here reciprocal articulation right so over here if it's concave it will be convex and over here convex will be concave at the distal articulation so that is about the articular surface right now let's move on to the next part that is your capsule so the capsule present around this cmc joint is lax in your neutral position so 
this is your neutral position this would be extreme of flexion extreme of extension extreme of adduction and abduction right so in neutral position the capsule is most loose and it is closed back in complete abduction and complete adduction so that is the nature of the capsule but the capsule because it's lax it is reinforced by radial and ulnar ligaments dorsal and volar ligament and also intermetacarpal ligament but the main key stabilizing structures that are present around the capsule which stabilize the cmc joint are your dorso radial ligament and anterior oblique ligament these are the two major ligaments okay so till now what did we cover we covered the structure of your cmc joint now understanding the structure we have to look into more detail that is the movement that is going to occur since we now understand how the articulation happens we can understand the axis better and also the range of movement so coming to the range of movement or range of motion there is 53 degree of flexion and extension 42 degree of abduction and adduction and 17 degree of rotation and opposition now this is based on the axis that is if you can see oblique axis that is oblique antero posterior axis is there for your flexion extension movement now if you consider a normal person what will antero posterior axis look like this right and then the movement would be this correct but if you see this is abduction adduction movement correct in the frontal plane but at the cmc joint this abduction adduction movement is called as flexion extension and flexion extension movement that is in the sagittal plane is called as abduction and adduction and this happens because of the change of axis and why does the axis change because of your medial orientation of trapezium which changes orientation of the axis so the trapezium bone which is present sli slightly rotates medially and what this does is it changes the orientation of the axis so if you have to look at it on the bone this is how it looks so about the orientation of the bone if you look at the trapezium over here what happens is it is slightly medially rotated so if you take my hand now this is abduction adduction right normally but what happens because the trapezium is medially rotated this outward movement becomes more of movement in this plane so this becomes adduction and abduction in the sagittal plane or more of slightly oblique plane and then what happens to flexion extension flexion extension which was happening like this again the trapezium is moved medially so flexion extension will happen in this plane so because of the orientation or medial slight rotation of your trapezium bone the movement of flexion extension and abduction adduction changes because the axis around which the movement happens these movements changes right the antero posterior axis goes slightly oblique and also the coronal axis becomes slightly oblique so with the orientation of the bone your coronal axis becomes slightly oblique and also antero posterior becomes slightly oblique and the function completely changes correct so this is about the axis and as i mentioned over here the opposition as i said before contains your abduction flexion and adduction so this is how it looks abduction flexion and adduction right this is how the opposition movement looks so that covers our function of the first cmc joint now small add ons that i wanted to mention over here was the trapezium bone had more incongruence in women compared to men right that is something that was seen and this can be correlated but not definitely can cause but it was seen that there was there is high incidence of cmc osteoarthritis in women so these can be related but you cannot always say because there can be other factors too but this is something you can keep in mind apart from that because of this oa what is one of the treatment that is taken is fusion of the cmc joint that is carpo metacarpal joint is fused that is basically your trapezium and the first metacarpal is fused and this can cause trapezius scaphoid joint to become a saddle shape saddle shape so this trapezius scaphoid joint becoming a saddle shape is a very good example of how our body adapts to its needs 
because it needs that opposition movement in day to day functions like holding a key or doing any fine motor activity our hand will adapt and it will ask trapezius scaphoid joint to take up the function of first cmc joint this is how amazing our body is and it's just very fascinating to me so i thought i'll mention this so with that we finish up this topic now let's quickly summarize what we covered so first we started with the structure of the thumb right we saw the articulating surface and because the trapezium is moved slightly medially the flexion extension and abduction adduction completely changes then we saw how ligament is reinforcing the capsule and the main ligaments were dorso radial ligament and the anterior oblique ligament then we moved to the function of it under function we saw the movement that is flexion extension abduction adduction and rotation or you can call it opposition and there is also the axis which is slightly tilted because of the orientation of your trapezium bone apart from that we saw how our body adapts when there is fusion of cmc joint which might be carried out if a person has oa and there is excruciating pain so with that we finish up this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching